He just doesn't beat himself. You know, he performs the same in a tournament as he does in a practice round. He can become friends with anyone. Uh, he's very engaging. And every chance I've had, I would grab him as a partner. A familiar sight. For the past 13 years, Joe Inman has built relationships, won championships, and taken the Georgia State men's golf team to new heights. He was born a coach, you know, so he was, um, he's always been a coach. He's just now officially a coach in name. He can certainly spot flaws in their swings or changes in swings, um, and I think that's what a good coach does. I'm a life coach. I'm not a golf coach. And I tell them all the time, look down that tunnel. See that light down there? That's not daylight. That's a train, buddy. And you better get moving down those tracks, because if you don't, that train's going to run right over you. And that train's called life. Before his life as a coach, Inman enjoyed a fine playing career of his own. Joe had a tenacious attitude. His short game was really good. Joe putted really well. And uh, Joe hit the ball close a lot. With a golf club in hand at the age of one, Inman found great success in his youth winning trophy after trophy, and eventually leading him to Wake Forest University. I went to college in 1965, and I was a walk-on. I didn't have a scholarship. The best thing in my life in golf was being around those players and Coach Haddock at Wake Forest. It's, it's one of the joys of my life. You know, when we played for our legendary coach, uh, Jesse Haddock here at Wake Forest, and he gave us that old 56 Chevy that we could use to go to the course because we didn't have a car. And you decided, because you're from Greensboro, you knew this place that you could go out on Friday nights. And Anyway, as fate would have it, it wouldn't start when we were leaving. So now we have to leave it there, and coach has to get it towed. After all these years, I couldn't live with that any longer and I told Coach that it was really your idea and not mine. So I just got that off my chest. But I still love you, pal. <laughs> After graduating, Edmund would go on to enjoy a distinguished professional career. He won four times as a professional on the PGA Tour, the 1976 Kemper Open, and on the Champions Tour, the Pacific Bell Open in 1988 and 1999, as well as the SBC Open in 2000. Whether it's a gun, whether it's a tiger, uh, whether it's a dreaded Georgia Bulldog, I know there would be all those Bulldogs out there. I can just hear them right now. You've got to be able to stand up to it. One of Inman's favorite memories from his playing days was the 1970 Walker Cup, which led him to the 1970 Masters at the young age of 22. By playing in the Walker Cup, I got to play in the Masters in 1970. I was 22 years old. I'd played in, that was the second professional tournament I'd ever played in. Now to stand up on that tee, and, and who did I get to play with in that tournament? You think about this. Gene Sarazen. When I, in 1970, Gene Sarazen was my age. I'm 68 years old. Gene Sarazen was my age when I played with him. I was 22 years old in the first round of the Masters in 1970. Can, can any amount of money buy that? What helped Joe Inman become successful more than any drive, chip, or putt was his wife, Nancy. His career is attributable to his talent and work, but the ability to pull it off is mom. I mean, without her taking care of all the background and being the CEO, CFO, chief operating officer, she did everything that allowed him to go practice, to go travel for three weeks and to make sure we go to school and learn and and develop character and do all things we you need to do as a parent and as a family. You know, that was her. And the ability to pull off Grandpa might also take Grandma's help. Grandpa is awesome. I mean, we love having Grandpa over, but we want Nana there with Grandpa. Because Grandpa with the boys unsupervised is just, that's, that's not good enough. <laughs> Joe Inman's temperament as a player and as a coach is second to none. But behind the wheel, We'll leave that one up to the Inman clan. As, as sweet as he is, he's a awful uh, behind the wheel. He's just like this really temperamental driver. And um, I mean, one of our favorites. We also took this trip to Spain and we had we decided to drive everywhere, which was a ridiculous decision looking back on it. And we have this GPS and it's saying, turn left, go left, turn left. We're all back there yelling at that, Dad, 
don't do it, turn right, go straight. And everybody's, you know, backseat driving for dad. And finally dad just stops the car in the middle of the road. He says, everybody, get out of the car. <laughs> and every one of us was dead silent and we were like, yeah, okay, you're right. <laughs> we just got out, he's like, I'm parking, I'll come find you. <laughs> Through the ups and the downs, the wins and the losses, as a role model for so many, Joe Inman has always done it right. I mean, at the end, we'd say, uh, you know, so well, you know, well done, a good and faithful servant. He's, he's done people and called him to do it. Well.